Do you want to build a SaaS startup but don't know where to start? Well, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Ilya, the founder of Elekin, a product design agency for SaaS. We work in SaaS niche and we've helped design a lot of MVPs. In this video, I'll take you step by step through the stages of launching a SaaS product from idea to launch and a little bit further. The first thing you have to do when developing your SaaS is to discover a problem worth solving and define a clear concept. There are stages of SaaS development you might be able to skip or interchange, but not this one. The main goal of any cloud software is to make the lives of its users easier. So you have to research your target audience and define the problem your SaaS will solve. What can it be? Usually SaaS products optimize the work process, help save space on the hard drive, or make it possible for customers to use an app with the smartphones anywhere. Let's take one of Alakin's clients, Prift, as an example. Most personal finance apps focus on short-term financial goals and don't provide long-term savings objectives. Pension platforms forecast the long-term goals but don't cover all personal financial assets. And using spreadsheets or hiring a financial advisor is not an option for everyone. So the problem Prif solved was combining the capabilities and ease of use of a personal finance app while helping people to manage long-term financial goals. As you can see, it's okay to build a SaaS that solves a very niche problem. The takeaway is that every successful business idea aims to solve a specific customer's issue and you have to define this issue to create a clear concept. The next, also inevitable stage of building SaaS products is conducting through competitor research. The analysis of your competitors include evaluating the following features, UI UX design, functionality, marketing methods, and pricing strategy. Except for the product itself, pay attention to the feedback customers leave your rivals on the platforms like Jitter Crowd or Capterra. It will help you better understand what your target audience likes and and dislikes and what they expect to receive from your service. There are several ways to cope with the competition. Some of them are to choose a narrow niche, consider a more attractive pricing, or develop a much better solution. In any case, you need to develop a clear value proposition. To attract serious clients and market your product correctly, you have to know the real value of your product brings to users. A classical value proposition is a short phrase that people place on landing pages. However, you need to go deeper. For example, Slack has a 10 page document describing its business value. They show very concrete numbers that explain how the performance of the different departments, sales, HR and marketing, for example, increases when they use Slack. It also depends whether you are scratching your own itch, which means creating a product for your own working process, or you found the market opportunity in the niche you're not very experienced in. By providing how you help businesses or people, you demonstrate the value of your product. We highly recommend following Slack's example, study and develop the benefits you can bring to your target audience and communicate them relentlessly. When you are more or less sure what you want to do, you can move to how. And a good starting point is setting goals and desired outcomes. To achieve the result, you should understand how to measure it. This is why goal setting is important. Start with a market investigation. Make competitive research, predict the timeline of your product development, and establish the metrics to check up on your project at different stages. You must have already heard about the smart concept. It means that the goals you set should answer five criteria. Be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. How does it work with SaaS? Imagine you're ready to launch your product and want to increase your sales by the end of the quarter. This goal meets only the smart criterion. It is the time-bound and you have chosen the deadline to review the results. But this goal is neither measurable or specific. And it's quite difficult to define if it's attainable. The smart goal instead will look like this. I expect a 20% increase in customers, 50% increase in website traffic growth, and 15% conversion growth by the end of the quarter, resulting in $100,000 revenue, for instance. You may set objectives such as acquiring a specific number of users or referral customers within a specific time frame. For example, the first three months. These milestones indicate whether you have a product market fit. Also, people from Silicon Valley usually said when you get to the product market fit, you feel it. Defining such targets help you guide your development process, providing a tangible measure of success. And while we're at it, let's talk about money. Deciding on monetization is also a vital step in developing a product. A lot of SaaS businesses try to compete in the market, establishing low prices either directly through the cheap services or indirectly through sales and discounts. It allows attracting more users. 
users, but you will struggle to win their loyalty. It means that to retain them, you will have to constantly stick to a low pricing strategy. So on one hand, you sell your value, not the low price. On the other, don't be afraid to experiment with your pricing. Front, for example, at some point started changing it every three weeks. They could handle the risk because they did it with small cohorts. This way, one can see the results with each price change and adopt the successful ones. Adobe was following a similar strategy. They didn't go all in without doing some testing with the subscription model, and you shouldn't too. You can consider several monetization strategies. Free with ads, freemium, subscription-based, usage-based, and blended. Check out our videos on SaaS pricing to learn more. Now to the practical work. If you're a developer, you can drive right into the creating an MVP. If you don't have enough skills or time thought, at this point you'll be creating a team. According to the research, issues with teams are among the most common reasons why products fail. On the contrary, most successful startups can say that they have great team and many introduce special team development strategies. Hiring your first team member can be very intimidating and time-consuming. There are other ways to go about it, for example, outsourcing to an agent. At Elekin, we often work with MVPs precisely because we save their founders time and effort finding the right designers. With or without them, there is a time to build a prototype. Prototype is a stage for SaaS application development that is supposed to showcase the product's functionality to test whether users like it. So it must be relatively close to the final product in terms of visuals. A UX prototype is a rough version of a product that allows to understand what idea, user flow, and layout are, and how the future product product is going to work. With its help, you can present the idea to investors or your colleagues, test the idea and design and collect feedback. To save time and costs, you might want to use ready-made tools, low-code and no-code platforms. So at this stage, you don't get too wrapped up in tech development. When you get your first feedback, it's time to design an MVP. Design is probably one of the most important aspects that contributes to the SaaS success. Good UI UX design can make the product addictive and important possible to give up. The experience customers get when interacting with your service influences the conversion and retention rates. Starting with the MVP is smart move that will help you to save time and money. This way, you're not jumping straight into costly development and launching. You can present it to the investors as well as your first real users and check out whether they like the product. And of course, whether they are willing to pay for it. If everything goes well, you can move to the actual building the software. This stage includes many technical aspects, defining the tech stack, setting up the database architecture that provides maximum security and the ability to scale your business laser, creating the architecture of the project, integrating the the API to maximize your SaaS capabilities and much more. Software development is quite costly. This stage requires the biggest spending unless you can do it on your own. That's why, as we said earlier, it's best to start with the MVP to make sure the idea doesn't flop. After testing and debugging your MVP, you will understand what features you need to include in your long-term product. Now you're ready to launch, but remember, the design is a process, not an event. After you launch, you need to constantly improve your product. It's crucial to keep your service running without any issues at any point. That's why, to stay competitive, you have to constantly monitor users' needs, research the market and latest trends, work with customer support, track innovations, and optimize your product. Test, get feedback, improve, and test again. For now, that's it. Our channel has a lot of useful information for SaaS founders, so check it out if you haven't done it yet. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you found it useful. See you in the next one.